Hi everyone, I'm sitting with Black before the games even started. Um, say something to the Russian community. Hello Russian community, mm -hmm. nice to talk to you again. Russian, Russian, come on. Russian? Uh, what do you learn? Привет. Something more, come on. Как uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice man. How's your Chinese going? My Chinese in Dota is pretty much flawless. Like there's no problem in communication. But out uh, yeah, but outside of Dota, it's very hard to communicate. Uh -huh. Because like if you want to do something, uh, like go out or do something, it's very hard because I don't know the words. But like you can say something like gang or uh, support me or help me or yeah, yeah, yeah. I know go in the woods. Yeah, yeah that's very very easy. Stay in the trees. <laughs> yeah, stay in the trees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's go back a little bit to the past <coughs> times. I interviewed uh, PyCat on DreamHack. Mm -hmm. It was like one month ago. And he said that basically one of the reasons because you had failure with LGD is because you didn't want to listen to some advice from the team. Is that true? And what was the reason and based on your opinion? Or no, like in my opinion, the reason why we disbanded was uh, we had five players with like five different personalities and different ideas of the game like they say i didn't listen to them which i didn't but they also didn't listen to me because uh -huh. we just like had very different ideas of the game so that's the reason why we failed okay and was there some person like manager or someone that can listen to you and then say okay this guy's right because this thing doesn't work like that you know if everyone has their own opinion yeah. no, at the end uh, someone came but it was like already too late because uh, in Dota if you like if you can't think the same way it's really hard to play together because you will always do something different in the game so that was like the biggest issue in my opinion you were standing for DK did you really feel that you're a good substitute for burning. No, I, I don't know. I don't think there's a good substitute for burning because in my opinion, he's still the best player. Like, of course he's Chinese. Like it will be much easier for them to play with him because they can like say whatever they want to. <laughs> and skill wise, of course, he's like much better than me too. You think so? Yeah, I think so, of course. <laughs> but uh, like I tried my best in that game and I, and in that game, I don't think um, I was the reason we lost. It was just, uh, we ha we lost one team fight and the enemy had a spectre okay. and so they had radiance after that fight and then we couldn't fight anymore <coughs> um you s you mentioned that you learn from burning a lot in real life and in dota yeah. can you name some examples and in, in dota i pretty much like based like one or two years ago i based my whole game upon him like i watched his replays try to imitate whatever he does so that's why they call me like little burning in China <laughs> okay. because I play exactly like him um, and in real life he taught me uh, he, he's always very humble like he, he treats his fans very nicely and all people around him as well so um, he's just like a really really nice guy and I think like he has the biggest fan base in China okay. for, yeah for a very good reason okay. because like, he's probably the nicest pro player I know does he have a uh, biggest uh, girl base in China? Oh, I don't know, but he, but he has a <laughs> girlfriend for sure. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did he teach you how to speak with girls in China? No, <laughs> because I c it's very hard to speak to Chinese girls. Seriously? Yeah. But actually, did you have someone while you stayed in China? You were there like half a year or more. Yeah. No, I actually didn't have anyone. Okay. Maybe uh, next time. Okay, next question. How did you get into CIS? Okay, I played a matchmaking game with one of my teammates and I said Future for... Future teammates, you mean? Oh yeah, like before oh, CIS, okay. yeah, before CIS. I played like a pub with one of them and I said for fun, hey, I want to join your team. And then he was like, oh, okay. And then like three days later, the manager added me on the Chinese uh, like messenger that's called qq, ah, QQ okay. yeah and he added me there and was like you want to join our team i was like yeah <laughs> well yeah. i didn't know are they okay sure if you want to try and then we played some games together it worked out well and then did you speak uh, english all the time with them or it was in chinese no, the manager 
Uh, like the boss of the team can actually speak pretty good English. Okay. So we spoke English first. But in pub? In pub when you spoke. Oh, oh no, I, I spoke Chinese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice, man. But then he added me and spoke English with me because it's much more convenient for me. And then that's how that happened. Do you feel that you're actually helping all these, they are basically new players, a new generation. Do you feel yourself kind of coach or something? Like, I taught them many things they didn't know, like like uh, the Roshan timer or something, or where to be and when to be somewhere, because um, they come from matchmaking only. Okay. They, they never had a team before. So it was really hard for them to play like uh, a really clan war game because it's very, very different from matchmaking games, of course. And in that regard, I'm not sure how much I helped them, but they personally told me that um, I helped them out a lot. So uh, I'm happy that we got that far. Do you feel the language barrier now at the international? No, when you, when you play? Like we have no language barrier at all. Okay. Um, what's your opinion about uh, like Chinese qualification on, on the LAN. It was actually really cool because it was this, like the same as here, a really big hotel. Okay. Yeah, uh, we actually played from our hotel rooms, like the, the first part. And we had one really, really big room oh. for, for everyone. And every team had their own room. And then we just played, like the first day was really bad. We had like 3-3, three, three, lost to many teams we shouldn't lose to. But then at the second day, we didn't lose a single game somehow. I don't know how. And then, uh, and then we got like top two in the group. And then uh, we lost to LGD, but beat DT, and that's how we ended up second place. But nobody expected that. I didn't expect it either. Okay, because so we only formed two months before that. Yeah. Uh, do you think actually that uh, LAN event helped you? And uh, do you think if you played online, it would be worth? Like for me personally, I, I think I play better on LAN. Mm -hmm. because it's just the atmosphere is much much better but for them uh, they were really really nervous mm -hmm. at first and then I told them calm down calm down just think it's a matchmaking game <laughs> and then <laughs> did it help <laughs> <laughs> at least after that they weren't uh, like they were shaking Sh but, really like uh, shaking hands uh, uh, be before I said that I and mean, after I said that they were like not shaking anymore at least <laughs> so I hope it helped out like in the end it worked out <laughs> nice yeah. um, Visacious, of course, everyone knows them. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> how did it happen that you got so many tries? I mean, was it so complicated? Other Chinese teams didn't sem seem to have oh, yeah, such yeah. problems. Okay, so it was really like weird. At first, uh, we came back from the qualifier. And I know like visa takes a very long time, yeah. especially in China. So I told them, go home right now apply for your visa do everything but they like wanted to wait a week or two why i don't know why so i got like super angry and screamed at them and then they left like five days later um and then they got their passports first and then returned back to the base okay. and then our boss felt super confident that they could get the first visa from the first yeah time. without without any preparation so i just <laughs> went there <laughs> and I got denied right away. Yeah, I got denied right away. And then the second time, they went there again without any preparation. Like they didn't even contact Valve or anything. So they got, <laughs> I, do, I don't know, that was really weird. And they got denied again a second time. And then after that, they, they contacted Valve and like other people to help them. I don't know why the third time they got denied again because they got all the uh, documents already but probably because they were denied two times before yeah, they already. Two times now so like the officers were like, hmm. Yeah. Something yeah. is not right. Yeah. yeah, and that was like the third time. I'm not sure why they got denied, um, but then uh, the fourth time. Um, you got the officer which played. Yeah, the yeah they, they was really, really lucky. Like I didn't think it was possible anymore because they have been denied three times in one week. I've never heard of that before. They went there and he said, yeah, I know that I'm playing Dota too. <laughs> And then they all got their visas from him. That was really, really, really lucky. Did you play matchmaking with him? Because I, th I know he got your contacts. No, like, uh, not with me, but I think the rest play with him. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> About preparation then. Because you got visas so late, did it influence your preparation? Okay, uh, in all honesty, we didn't practice for over 40 days. 
Like, until now, yeah, until 40 now. days. Like today was the first time we played together for 40 days or over 40 days now. Why is that? Okay, so after the qualifier, when they got home, they all went home for their passports. Okay. Yeah, and then I said we should practice online, but they didn't want to practice online. I don't know why. Maybe they feel uncomfortable or something. I don't know. So three weeks later, they come back home, like to our base, and then their visa got denied the first time. Okay. And then they said they don't feel so well. Uh, they would rather not practice. Like morally or? Yeah, like, I don't know. Like they just said they don't feel so well. Okay. And then they said they don't want to practice, and I was like, yeah. well, yeah, you know, what, 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 what can I say? And then that was like three weeks plus two weeks, so that's almost 40 days. And then like. I had visa issues in China as well, so I had to leave like five days earlier than them. Uh -huh. So that's a total of like 42 days or something. And we didn't play like at all. So, yeah. That was <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see you're really confident now. <laughs> uh, did you actually f uh, hear about that boycott of uh, DK in China? Did you... Oh talk to someone and was it truth actually i'm not sure whether it was true or not but uh during that time dk only played with us and vg gaming which they also said in the statement so i assume it's true because like something similar happened before with another team i can't remember which team it was but like a year before that also happened uh, so it's definitely realistic but i'm not sure whether it happened or not like i can't say for sure you mentioned that you started uh, doing some sports. Mm. I mean, was was it like a something sudden change that influenced your decision, or? No, it was just uh, a lot of times, like when I didn't want to practice or something, I was just sitting there not doing anything. So basically, what I did, I got like I searched for a gym, and then I got a membership card, and I just went there every morning oh. before we practice every morning. Every morning. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's actually really fun because like uh, I do running, like lifted to some weights or something. But I, I also had many friends who I played badminton with. It was really fun. Like that was like one of the best parts of the day. Some people from the Dota community they say that your team has not so many chances because uh, like all the, the the team is playing around you, <laughs> and basically if they like the op opponents ban your heroes then you're you can't win do you think so or maybe you can adapt somehow no like i wouldn't say they're playing around me but like in the qualifiers we always played with like uh three farming heroes not one farming hero so i wouldn't say they're playing around me at all we just uh like try to split up the farm evenly so if they shut someone down, the others get farm and can still fight well. So uh, I wouldn't say that's true. You also mentioned that Chinese were playing kind of safe style, yeah. but DK proved wrong. Like they they played so aggressively lots of times. Yeah. What do you think now in the international? Uh, will they still play like safe? No, like ever since DK, all the Chinese ch teams like they all changed their style. They're playing a lot more aggressive now. They're playing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more aggressive than they used to. And I think it's all because of DK. Because um, they dominated China with that. Uh -huh. And then everybody started playing their heroes. And now all the Chinese teams kind of play like uh, DK does. So, like, they kind of brought a trend in here. Probably because of Ice Ice and Mushi. Because they just like to tower dive and kill people. <laughs> That's probably because of them. <coughs> uh, where did such heroes like Nax, Clockwork and Visage go? Why are they not picked? And uh, why Skyrath Mage is so popular now? Um, I think Skyrath Mage is very popular because of Faces Void. When you chrono someone, like you can just kill him instantly with the Skyrath Mage. I think that's why he's very popular, as well as his silence. He counters many, many heroes. Um, as to why Visage and the other heroes fell off, it's because uh, the whole meta game right now is about team fighting. Like you pick Void, Enigma, Doom, Tide Hunter, yeah, all those heroes, and like Visage and Clock, they just don't fit so well in there. You think there is a point of not revealing strategies before TI on the big tournaments like Starlight or EMS? Yeah, I always hear that a lot, but. I don't think it's ever true because you never want to lose on purpose 
because like every human has pride, right? Like, like if you lose, you will feel very bad. Like, I don't think anybody does it on purpose to like save strategies because in one month, everything can change again. Why would you save your strategy that might not be good anymore in one month? You know, it's like, it doesn't make any sense. So like, I think it's just a community who's trolling around, <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. like, like finding reasons why the team lost or something. Yeah, like yeah. excuses. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think that players deserve so much money? Because, for example, when you win Wimbledon in tennis, you get the same amount for the first prize, like one million dollars. But there, to win Wimbledon, you need to practice like 15 years. And here, you can just enter the thing, like Admiral Baldock. Two years ago, he was yeah, just pop okay. player. So, I mean, do you really think we deserve, like we, I mean, pro players deserve such amounts of prizes? Like, I'm not sure whether we deserve it or not, but... Uh Like, personally, I think the first place gets, like, like too much. Because, uh -huh. like, for example, I think from place eight to nine, there is huge yeah, there's, like, 40,000 to 500,000. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I think they should, like, take some away from the first place and distribute, and distribute like, more evenly. Because, like, that spike is, is really, really big. Because, like, one game can decide about Like what like three million now or something like but but it also it also shows how big dota got like it's incredible like last year it was what three million yeah in total yeah, yeah in three million now total it's now, yeah, yeah, now it's like and almost twice the amount of players like i'm not sure whether like we deserve it or not but uh the community definitely makes sure that the game is growing all the time and like I don't know, it just feels great to be part of this community now. And they're always getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Nice. Yeah. Uh, do you think that there should be more bans in the pick ban phase so that players don't always pick those, you know, imbalanced heroes? Well, I think um, because they're adding many, many new heroes, I think like it's time for a sixth ban soon, maybe. Six, maybe yeah. seven or five. No, no, I, I, I think like six is enough because if every team can ban seven heroes, then you could just like for example ban all pushing heroes and then that strategy can't be picked anymore at all okay. so that would be you know limiting teams too much but uh, there's gonna be a lot new heroes soon so I think you need a six ban just because like uh, you need to be able to counter the strategy of the enemy like later on in the draft but I think for right now the hero pool five bans is okay for each player yeah, for each team um, if you had only one wish, you know, if you caught some gene or something, you have one wish, what would you choose? To win the international or to have a girl of like all your life, girl of your dream? Uh, I think if I had a wish, I would wish that the girl of my dream, which is forever with me, is going to watch me win TI. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, smart, smart. Yeah. We'll count that. Um, if you will not participate so well in the international, yeah. will you still stay in China? Uh, I definitely like think about going back there, like no matter what happens now. Okay. Uh, but I'm not sure what's gonna happen after the international because after every international there's a huge change everywhere. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen after, but I'm definitely interested in going to China again. Because now I can speak the language, so it's not a big problem anymore. Have you ever thought about becoming a coach in Europe? I'm like, when I retire, when I feel like it's not like good anymore to play for me, I definitely want to stay in the esports scene, like as a coach or manager or like caster or something like that. So I definitely thought about that. And uh, once I actually like retire, um, I'll think about that. But I'm like not sure what I want to do. But I want to stay in Dota for sure. Okay, last maybe a bit silly question, but where? What about food? Where is the best food? Europe, China, or USA? I like the Chinese food. Like okay, in China. I like the vegetables a lot, yeah, the vegetables, but in the West, I like the meat a lot better than in China. So in China, I ate a lot of vegetables and here I eat a lot of meat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice one. Okay, now shout outs, uh, anything you want to say yeah. in the end? Uh, shout outs to all my friends, supporters and like, family. You always support me very well and without you, I would 
probably have given up a long time ago. So thank you very much, everyone. And I will try my best to not disappoint you. Okay, nice. Okay, good luck then in qualifiers. Thank you very much. That was Smorf and the coverage for the international. See you guys. Goodbye.